Thanks for watching the first two part of this series on how to create Gantt chart in Excel. And today we are here with the third part. In this video, we will add more important features and give the chart a professional look. So stay tuned till the end. Without taking any more time, let's start the video. Hi guys, welcome back to Tech Reflections. I am Vikram and today we will further enhance the Gantt chart that we created in part 1 and 2. If you haven't watched them, then I recommend you to go and check out the first two parts by clicking on the i button at the top of this video. Link for the same will also be provided in the description. In this video, we will add features like dynamic timeline start day, adding scroll bars to maneuver the timeline, and considering holidays in the Gantt chart. So keep watching the video till the end. Now let's begin enhancing our Gantt chart further. This is the Gantt chart that we prepared in the part 1 and 2. So for enhancing it, uh, the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to format the percentage complete field. So this is the column. Here we will be uh, using the conditional formatting to give a, a look of progress bars in these uh, cells. How can we do that? We'll just go to home, conditional formatting. Under that, we'll go to data bars. In data bars, there are two kinds of uh, formatting we can do. One is via gradient fill, the other one is solid fill. Uh, you can hover around these to see how it will look in your Gantt chart. So you can choose any uh, color of your choice. This is the gradient fill and in the below part you can uh, do it for the solid fill. So I am just doing the orange data bar. So this way now our uh, Gantt chart uh, progress field looks like that they, there are a progress bar which changes uh, as the percentage completion value changes. Let's say in this case, if this task is 30% complete, it, now I change it to let's say 70% complete. So uh, this bar will get updated accordingly. So it gives a very, uh, very good look to, to our Gantt chart. Moving to the next one, the next thing that we are going to do is we'll make the timeline start date dynamic. So timeline start date is the, this date. So right now, this date is the same date, which is our uh, uh, project start date. So what we are going to do here is that uh, uh, we will just uh, uh, show this date as the first date of the month. If our date is, uh, project start date is between 1st to 15th of the month. And if it is um, after 15th of the month, then it will show the start date uh, the timeline start date as 15th of that month. Let's see how that is done. To do that, we have a formula called EO month, that is end of month. So that formula gives the end date of the month for which the date is provided. So let's first try that formula here. We'll just enter uh, equal to EO month and then uh, you can see in the argument it's asking for a start date. So this is the date from which it will pick up the month and give the end date for that particular month. So in our case, we want this date to be the start date. And in the month, there is a, another uh, argument it asks for that is month. In month, it's asking for if we want uh, end of the day of any other month, which can be like added few months after this date or few months before this date that the uh, number can be given here. So in our case, because we want to arrive to the first day of that month, so so there is a way out is that we will just use minus one here and this will give us the last date of the previous month. So if I just press enter, okay, so it shows me a number here, which is because the, the cell is not formatted uh, as, a, as a date field. So we'll just change the format, go to date and just press OK. So you can see uh, it is showing us as 31st of August, uh, 31st, uh, yeah, 31st of August as the last date. So in our case, uh, which is OK with us, and we just want the next date uh, because we want the 1st of uh, September to be shown because our start date is 5th of September. So we'll just go and add one to it so it gives us the first uh, day of september so 
um, as I told you that what we want here is that if our start date is within the first 15 days, that is from the first of the month to 15th of the month, we want our timeline to start from first of the month, which we have arrived here. But if our date is after 15th of that month, then we want the timeline to start from 15th. So how can we do that? For that, uh, first of all, we need to extract the day part of our date, that is 5th of September. For that, there is another formula. Let me try it here, equal to, the formula is text, and it asks for a value. So value would be this date, and what we want, it asks for a format, in which format, so our format is because we want date. So in um, colon we will give code. Sorry, we will give DD, which means that I want the day part. And then I close the bracket. So it gives me the date. That's the zero five. But um, this function returns a string, and what we want uh, it to be a numeric value. So for that we need to use another uh, function that is value. And value expects a text here, which is uh, uh, the output of our uh, text uh, formula. We'll just close the parenthesis and now it is returning as five. This is a numeric value now. So we can use this value anywhere as, as a numeric value. So um, our scenario is that if this particular value that is five, if let's use if here, if this is greater than 15, then we'll use the end of month uh, uh, formula, which we used earlier, EO month, and we'll provide this 5th of September as the date, and then we'll provide minus one because we want to go to the previous month, and then we want to add one to it, so that goes to the first day of the month, but in this case, it goes to the first month because uh, we are okay here, but uh, we want uh, the value, if well, we are checking if the value is greater than 15. So in that case, we will just add 15 because we want to move from the last day of the previous month to the 15th of this month. So we'll just add 15 days to it. Otherwise, if it is not greater than 15, that is less than equal to 15, then we use this formula again, EO month and start date again would be 5th of September. And we want to go back to the previous month, last date, and then we'll just add one this time, because we want to go to the first date of September. Okay, there's a typo, so let's let it correct. Okay, again, uh, we need to change it to the date field. Okay. So now it shows us uh, 1st of September because right now uh, our start date is 5th of September. Let me change this to 20th of September, let's say, our start date. Then in that case, it moves to the 15th of uh, September. So this is this formula is working fine. No, so now we can just copy this and use this as our first date. So in place of D2, we just replace it with this formula. Okay, so now it's 20th September. So our timeline is starting from 15th. If I again change it to, let's say 05. So our timeline shifts to 1st of September. Okay, so now moving to the next part. So next addition that we are going to do here is we are adding a horizontal scroll bar, scroll bar to move the timeline left and right. Right now, if you can see, uh, uh, the timeline is, you know, uh, for that we need to scroll uh, from uh, the scroll bar of uh, this Excel window. But here we will just have a scroll bar here in the top of it, which will help us scroll our timeline and not the full screen. Okay, let's see how that is done. For adding a scroll bar, you need to have this developer tab in your uh, menu bar. If you don't have that, then you can go to file, then to options, 
and under, op under options you have customized ribbon and on the right side you see uh, i think as main tab and all the tabs are visible here in your case this developer tab would be unchecked you can just check it i already have this checked so that you can check it and click ok and now you'll uh, get this developer tab as uh, visible on your uh, menu bar now you can go here uh, under that there is a button called insert you can click on the insert and you will get two kind of control here form controls and activex controls so we are concerned about the form control here so in this form control there is a, a control called scroll bar you just click on that and wherever you want now you can uh, you know add your uh, scroll bar like this so this is how it will uh, show up on your uh, uh, gantt chart now you can right click on this and click on format control and the format control you can see there are few values under the control tab current value current value you should keep at zero minimum value is also zero and maximum value here is 100 you can uh, keep it any value but let us in our case i just keep it as 10 incremental change is one that is fine and now the this um, there's a field called cell link so this is very important because uh, uh, for this uh, scroll bar to work it will be linked to uh, any particular cell within our uh, excel so at this point of time let me select uh, any cell let's say f2 and go back and click ok so right now this uh, scroll bar is linked to f2 uh, what does that mean I i'll tell you so any value that we have in this cell f2 will be directly linked to this scroll bar how that is uh, done let's say if you have one let's say we have 10 and then i press enter so if you can see uh, this scroll bar moved towards the right because uh, the maximum value that we gave for our scroll bar is 10 in this case because this is a formatted as date field we just go and change it to a number and in number also we just remove the decimals okay so and if i let's say change this value to five the scroll bar uh, also moves and now it is in, at the center so this way the scroll bar is linked how, how are we going to use it because now we want this scroll bar to be linked to the our timeline so the uh, let's try the first uh, date here the first date is right now calculated on the basis of uh, this formula so apart from that um, we now move want this to move or uh, looks like uh, moving towards the right or left because this is the first uh, uh, date so we'll move to the right and, uh, and then we'll come back uh, left let's see how this is done to make this scroll bar work we need to attach it to the first field that's the first date that is g5 how can we do that uh, right now this first date is getting calculated as the output of this formula so uh, if you want uh, the scroll bar to scroll over timelines so in that case uh, we need to add whatever is the value of this uh, cell uh, into uh, the, the day uh, the first day which is shown on our timeline so in this case let me just add the value of this cell here if you press enter uh, nothing has changed but let's say now if i move towards the right i click it once so it moves the, the timeline moves by one date so right now what is happening is whenever this value changes if its value is one then the, it is incrementing the day by one. You can have it like this also, but uh, it would be good if you can use it for uh, moving the moving a week. Then it may, makes more sense. So what? How we can do that? As we have added right now, only the value whichever is there in F2. So in this case, if we want to move a week, so we can just uh, multiply this F2 by seven. Okay, 
So now if this value is one, so that means uh, multiplied by seven, seven is getting added to our uh, timeline. So now our timeline is showing a start at 8th of September. Okay, let's say I press once more, and this value moves to two and it moves to the next week. Again, on the left side also, if I click once, it comes back to one and this uh, timeline also moves towards the left and it's showing one week prior to 15. So this is how this uh, horizontal scroll bar will work and we can just hide this value because we don't want to show this to um, uh, to anybody. So we can just go and let's say use this. We'll just use the font color as white, which is matching with the background. So it's now uh, not visible. So this is how the uh, original scroll bar works. And now uh, we have already added some key features to the Gantt chart, but yet to come in this video is how do we consider holidays in our plan? Okay, if you are finding this video useful, then like this video and share it with your friends. Also subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon so that you get notified when a new video is published on this channel. Moving to the next feature, that is adding a holiday marking in the timeline. Okay, so the, the, the same way we did it for um, the weekends on our current date, uh, we have marked, let's say, if, you know, if you can see it in the Gantt chart, um, we have clearly marked our weekends with the gray color, then we have marked uh, the current date uh, in, in, with the border red. Now the same thing needs to be done, but this time we, are, we need to do it for holidays. So how, how can we do that? Let's see that. To add holidays to our timeline, first of all, uh, I've already captured a list of holidays here. So you can also add your holidays. And now uh, we want to use this um, at various locations. So uh, the good idea is that we should be using a named range here. What is a named range? Uh, by name range, you can uh, uh, name a certain range of cells which can be used with that name rather than referring this range everywhere. So how are we, how can we do that? We can just select the area which we want to name. And then in the formula, there's a name manager. Go and click that. And you can add a holiday uh, name range like this. So in this case, let me edit and show you how, how I did that. So this is the name we have given to our name range, holidays. And this is sheet four, that is the, the current sheet we are in, and the range D4 to D7. So this is already uh, defined. You can define it for you, for your uh, uh, chart also. Click OK. And now this holidays we can use anywhere rather than going into the detail of this range. OK, let's see. Going back to the GAN chart. And now for... Uh, Showing the timeline, for showing the holidays in our timeline, we use the formula as match. So how that is done is, let me first show the match formula here. Match is asking for a lookup value. The lookup value would be this date, or for that matter, any date that, need, that needs to be checked. And lookup array, lookup array would be uh, holidays. That's the named range we mentioned. Then the last one is uh, match type. So we want that this to be exact match. So we use the value zero and then we close the parenthesis and press enter. So this shows as NA because right now this 15 is not the holiday uh, in our holiday list. So if you just want to check uh, this formula, we can use see uh, we have 2nd of October as a holiday. So we'll use this date, that is X5. So in our formula, let's say if we use X5, so uh, again, let me change the format to standard, and it shows one, which means uh, it's true. So this is the date. So that way, uh, the match formula would be able to identify that the date we are trying to look up is within our holiday range or not. So now we can just copy this 
formula come out of the edit mode and then select the whole range and we'll use the conditional formatting as we have been doing for uh, you know other um, uh, formatting requirements so we'll just select all of the timeline go to home then conditional formatting and then go to manage rules new rule we can go to that new rule directly also use a formula as we have been doing earlier so we'll just copy it but in this case we just change this x5 to, to the first cell which is having this date g5 but we don't want to uh, you know lock both the row and the column so we just want to um, uh, block the uh, uh, the row part so we can just use fn uh, f4 So this way we have blocked our uh, row and the column is free. And then we'll change the format. We'll go here. Let's say we'll add a fill color. Let's say we have a light green color for the holidays. Click OK. Come here. And this now we apply. OK. So she, this is uh, visible. Now we have uh, this holiday also shown in our uh, timeline. So right now, 2nd of October is a holiday, then 25th of October is a holiday. So uh, that are shown here. So now uh, we move to the next part that is, now we have to also adjust our start date and end date for these holidays. Right now, in our previous uh, uh, part of this series, we adjusted our start date and end date on the basis of weekends. Now we are going to do that for holidays. So how can we do that? See, I'll show you for the first date here. Here we use the formula as work day. So in work day, we provided uh, the start date and then the eight days. And then you see there is another uh, parameter uh, which is an optional parameter for holidays. So we just have to provide holidays here. Um, in our case, we have a named range uh, which is identifying the list of holidays. So we'll just use that here. And then press enter. So now there's no change because the 7th of uh, September is not a holiday. So, but this this way we will do it for uh, all the dates. Now we also consider the holidays, so that way the date gets moved uh, by one day whenever there is a holiday within that uh, the holiday list. Let me quickly do it for all, and then I'll come back to you. Uh, we have completed it for all the all the days. Let's check it once. This particular task, that is task 3.1, if you see this task is starting from 28th and completing 28th uh, September and uh, finishing on 9th, 6th, 9th of October. So, and within this duration, we have two days for the weekend, these two days, and then one for the uh, holiday. So let's see, uh, uh, is our plan taking care of these three of within this for this task so this task is total for nine days and on our gantt chart if i count everything it should show us as 12 days so let us count so these are the first four days then these three days seven and then these five days that is 12. so this task is for for full nine days and it has taken care of the, the weekends and the holiday that we just now added okay so now we move to the next part in our first and second part we adjusted our plan uh, on the gantt chart for weekends and this and this part we did it for holidays 
but the actuals which you see that the darker blue color we have not uh, taken care of this as in our actuals um, we have not taken care of weekends and uh, holidays that you can clearly see that the task 1.1 is 100% completed but on the this um, gantt chart you see it shows only 50% why so so let's see first go to the start okay so this task is now uh, fully visible so uh, this task 1.1 is 100% completed but if it is 100% completed then i think this uh, this blue dark blue color should be overlapping with the light blue color but that is not happening we still see two days uh, of blue light blue color which means that the planned activity is still left and the actual has not completed 100% which is shown as the percent is complete so why this is happening is because we uh, use this actuals on the basis of duration but because of this uh, additional uh, weekends and uh, holidays the duration remains the same the task duration remains the same but the total uh, amount of time uh, uh, between the these two dates is not actually equal to the duration so that is the reason uh, this actuals is uh, not mapping with uh, uh, with the plan so that's not a big problem we can just uh, uh, resolve this just select this whole range a whole timeline range and we can go to home conditional formatting and we can go to manage rules so this particular rule is for uh, the actuals let's edit it so here what we were doing was we were just adding uh, the duration multiplied by the percentage and whatever days comes we just add to the start date so that gives us the date uh, up till which this task is completed on the basis of the percentage so which is currently not correct so, so to clearly understood understand this we just copy this formula and we just come out of it and we'll paste this formula here and let's make some changes to this so now this is clearly visible here that uh, we are just trying to check that this particular date g5 which is our uh, first date in the timeline we are just checking it if it is greater than or equal to c8 which is the start date which in this case also is correct we want this to be greater than or equal to start date and then the second condition is that we are we were checking is that we want it to be less than equal to the sum of uh, the start date plus the duration here we just need to uh, remove this b8 which is the duration part and replace it with the difference between the start date and end date that is this this has to be end date minus start date and we can remove this minus 1 also from here and as because we just want to drag this so we'll use f4 to log only the uh, column part will press enter currently we are checking for g5 so and g5 is uh, not within the task so what we can do we can uh, just for trial purpose we can check it for 17th or 18th so we can just use w here and w here let's see okay so now it is true because um this particular task uh, this 17th date comes within this uh, formula and ideally it should be true so uh, this blue bar needs to uh, be covering 17th also you can just copy it from here 
and we'll go back to uh, we'll just select this all the timeline uh, cells go to conditional formatting manage rules and select the formula for actuals edit rule and then we just copy this formula and this time we'll just change this w from from w to g okay apply let's see if it works yeah so now it is working because uh, you can see that this task is 100 percent and now it is overlapping the uh, planned task so let us try for this also and let me complete this task by 100 percent and now this is fully colored uh, in the dark blue color so this is also uh, was one of the thing that we uh, the, uh, that was need to be done because the actuals were not um, working as the plans so as the next thing we'll just format this whole gantt chart to give it a professional look let's see how how that is done for formatting first of all let's add a row here and now let's modify these let us merge these cells. Okay. Also, let's change the name of this field to status. And then we can reduce the size of the font a little bit okay now for this project start date you can move it a bit down same we'll do the with the value and we'll just merge these cells let's add another field here for uh, project name and we'll merge these cells for that keep it left aligned and let me leave these cells merged for the value to be entered for project name and because these fields are uh, need to be edited so just to identify them let's give them a border okay and now we can move this a bit down and let's reduce its size also here we can add another field as project manager so we can just merge few cells for project manager. Before that, let's change the font for this. <clears throat> now we can merge let me merge these cells also to enter the value for the name of the project manager and do the same for these we can bold this state also we can add borders for the value to for the field where border where the project manager name would be added also because now we have the scroll bar so we may not need such a uh, long timeline so we can just keep it for um, five weeks that is first second third fourth and fifth so as of now we can just 
removes uh, these two weeks. Just add the border here. We just want the right border, so just for go to format in the border, just add the right border. Okay. Now the whole, the whole timeline would be visible on our screen. Let's try if this still works. Yeah, this one is working. You can go right. Okay. So right now it is allowing us the 10 moves. We can increase or decrease the moves there. If our uh, this GAN chart is going beyond the state, then we can add the um, increments also there. That that can be done by clicking on this and go to format control, and this um, maximum value can be changed. Right now, it allows us uh, 10 movements because the maximum value is 10 and minimum value is zero. Okay, at the top, uh, you can just add a background color. This of your choice. Let me add this again. Okay, so this is the value that uh, we need for our um, the scroll bar. So I can just move it. I just go and let's say, let me use this cell for my cell link. I just put the value 10 here and in the format control, I just change this to this cell. Okay. So yeah, it's updating. So as of now, I just hide because I just want don't want to show this. So I I change its font color to the same as the background color, so it's not visible. So this way, now we are able to uh, add the formatting to our uh, can chart. Now we can delete this value from here. And also we can just uh, change the background color for the fields where uh, value is expected so that they are clearly visible. Okay, we can remove these values, this formula that we used. Okay, you can also add a logo of your organization here uh, if you want. So guys, this is all what we planned for this video series. If you want me to add more features to our GAN chart, then drop a comment and I'll come up with another part of this series. For this GAN chart, we have a combination of, we have used a combination of conditional formatting along with other Excel formulas. So if you want to see any other application of Excel tools and formulas, then do let me know. Apart from the GAN chart, if you are interested in learning more about Excel tools and functions, then the link for those videos will be on your screen now. Check out those videos and share your feedback. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, stay safe, stay healthy, and goodbye.